Hi everybody, this is Denise with PurplePaperParadise.com and today I'm going to show you a little taste of what we can do with SVG files using the Make the Cut software and our eCraft machines. Now that the beta plugin is out, we can start playing around with all the different options that Make the Cut gives us. So the first thing that I'm doing is I have a new project up here on the screen and I'm making sure that my orientation arrow here is at the top of the screen and that it says over here portrait. That way when it cuts, it'll cut exactly what I see on the screen is exactly what will come out of the eCraft. So that is very helpful to have. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to import an SVG file. And to do that, there's a little icon up here. It says, it's kind of hard to see, but it says SVG right on it. So we can go ahead and open that. And today I am working with some files that I got from LetteringDelights.com. It's called Animal Boxes and Bags, and it's really, really cute. Um, over here, you'll see a preview of the SVG file that I have selected. And we can also click on this large preview screen and get a much bigger image of what it is that we are looking at. The other thing that's nice here is that we have a use actual size check mark here. So that way the file will import at the exact size in which it was created. So if you're creating a file in Inkscape and it needs to be exactly um, exact measurements and that kind of thing, you can always just check mark this and then that way you'll get the correct size and make the cut. So I'm going to go ahead and select open here. And now we have our SVG on the screen. Now if I were to import this into the eCraft Shop uh, software, what would happen is I would only get one file and all of these layers that we have in this file would not be visible or we would not be able to separate them or anything like that uh, with the eCraft software, but with Make the Cut we can. Before I go on to doing that though, I want to show you a little bit about sizing things proportionately. Now you'll notice up here in the middle of your screen you have an X and a Y and those are the measurements as to where they are placed on the mat. So if I were to go in here and change my Y to 1.5, you'll see that the SVG moved down and now the very top of it is at the one and a half inch mark. Next to that here we have our width and our height and you also have this lock icon and you'll notice right now that I have that lock icon is unlocked and if I were to go ahead and um, do some resizing here this way it would stay proportionate even with that like lock icon on using this corner arrow however if I did it doing this way then it would stretch out so that's something that you need to be aware of. I'm going to go ahead and click undo so we go back to our original image. But when that lock icon is off, I can enter in a height measurement or a width measurement and it will not change the proportions of it. So you could like really scrunch them down or make them really fat or something like that. But what we are going to do here is we're going to go ahead and lock this. And now if I were to say, okay, I want my height on him to be four and a half inches, I'm type in 4.5 and hit enter. And you'll see he's automatically resized for me and it figured out the width should be 7.2863 based on those measurements. So that is how we can go ahead and resize everything proportionately. And since I had all the little layers in there selected at the same time, we can easily do that. Now I just clicked off of it and you'll see that everything here is outlined in blue and when you hover over a shape the outline turns to red and I can go ahead and select just that shape and I know I just have that one because of the red outline. Let's say I had selected that but I also want to select this bit of his tail. All I need to do then is select shift and select that and then I get that layer as well and this tail here is actually grouped with the mane so that's why that mane is actually showing up in red as well but all of these face features here are staying blue. I'm going to go ahead and deselect here though 
and I want to move over to talking to you a little bit about the layer properties. This is probably the most common way that people work with their SVGs in Make the Cut and I do really like how the layers work in this program as well. If you see here we've got only one layer and it even tells us that we have seven shapes in here and if we click on this plus mark we can see all of the different shapes that are in this SVG. Now to get each one of those to be on their own layer so that we can work with them individually one at a time you do a right mouse click and then select to each its own and what happens then is that each one of those uh, files or layers in that file got moved to its own layer so now what we can actually do is we can start kind of playing around with this a little bit and working with each layer individually so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this bottom layer here this is like the base layer and I'm going to do a right mouse click and I'm going to just hit select shapes. So now it's only uh, selecting the shapes that are in this layer. And we have a little preview screen here of what that layer is. Now usually what I do to kind of visualize how this SVG is going to look all cut out is I kind of color it. So I'm going to go ahead and select a color here. I'm selecting orange and I'm going to uh, then move on to the next one here and let's see this one I'm going to make this be yellow and let's see his face let's make this like a brown this is probably not the colors that I will use to or tan we're going to use tan there it's probably not the colors that I will use to actually cut this out with but it's something that we can do to kind of just get an idea of everything. This layer here is going to be, actually no, that one's going to be black because that's showing the the pupils of his eyes and then this one will be white and then let's see we've got two parts of his nose. Let's go ahead and make one of these orange. Let's make this one yellow and make the other one orange as well and we'll go ahead and now we have our whole line here colored out. Now I have two different shapes here that I both colored orange and let's say that I want to have both of these shapes be orange and I want to cut them out at the same time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select this orange shape, this first one, and I'm actually going to move it over and then select this one here and move him over and let's just go ahead and select the rest of this and just move move it out of the way a little bit so we can see what we're working with. So we've got these two shapes and I can move them wherever I want like I think that probably would work out best or maybe this here yeah this would probably work out best for saving paper so I'm gonna move them like that and then I'm going to do my shift and select both of them at the same time and I'm going to go down here to my toolbar and select join. Now both of these shapes, if we look over here, both of these shapes are on the same layer and they are joined. So if I move them, I'm selecting them, I'm selecting both of them at the same time. Now let's say I realized I didn't want to do that. And let's say I did it a while ago and so undo is not an option in this case. All you would need to do is go to this selection here, which is split, and it now has unjoined those two shapes. Pretty cool. So now let's go ahead and talk about how we go about getting all these um, features and everything cut out. What I normally do when I have a multi-layered image like this is I normally will either do one of two things depending on how many of these I have to cut out is I may load up one sheet of the orange and cut out this these pieces you know let's say I was going to make five of these I can select these and I can duplicate it by five on my screen by using this duplicate feature here and spacing and now I actually have as many that will fit on the screen here. Let's undo that though. 
If I'm just cutting out one of these, what I might do is arrange the pieces on the mat in different areas and then cut them from scraps, which I will show you a little bit more about how to do that tomorrow. But I want to go over first off how we go about cutting, keeping all of this on the screen and only cutting the one color at a time. So we've got our orange layer here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the bottom here. There's an eyeball uh, icon and I'm going to select hide all. And you'll see that everything on the screen, it's not disappeared but it looks very faint and you might not even be able to see it when you're looking at this video. But then I, if you see here on each layer there's a little eyeball thing and I can select that and select show layer. When you go to cut something and make the cut, it's only going to cut those shapes that are shown on the mat. Everything else that is hidden is going to stay hidden. So I can go ahead and cut out this, these orange pieces right now. And then when, I was, when I'm done with that, I can hide this layer and I can open up the next layer, which are these white eyeballs. And I can position this wherever I want on the mat and cut those out as well. So that's just a little introduction into working with SVGs and using our layers and sizing everything. Um, things that we did not have the ability to do in the eCraft Shop Pro software. So this is all very, very cool stuff to be able to work with this now with Make the Cut.